hills into, into Rome. Uh -huh. And they were probably had 2,000 people stopped there and came daylight. And this is the up in the sky there was fighter planes circling around, getting into formation. Mm -hmm. The signal for friendly troop was brown smoke. Mm -hmm. We put out brown smoke, they came down and strafed us and went around again. They started getting again. We put out a lot more brown smoke and they came and strafed us a second time. And then they left and the British came. And the British saw that brown smoke and they wiggled their wings and left. Hmm. You ever hear the Tuskegee? Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a bunch. Well, they must have gotten their signals wrong. They didn't. They just didn't follow it. It was a happy they forgot all about everything else. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> my my time command come and said, "Jump in the jeep." He said, "You going to meet the youngest general in the army, and we're going to meet him in a beautiful place, Torre Sapienza." There's a special suburb from Rome. Mm -hmm. Oh, they went to the lobby and carved ivory, uh -huh. uh, ivory, carved marble. Yeah. Made a big white, not white, a yellow flower. Uh-huh. Yeah. It was quite something. And what's the name of that place? Hmm? Uh, what was the name of that suburb? Torre Sapienza. Okay. Anyway, um, he got in there and General Frederick came in. Now, General Frederick was two years older than I am. Oh, wow. And so he was 20, 29, I was 27. Okay. And uh, he says, well, let's see, do you have any, what kind of radio do you have? We didn't have any compa compatibility. He says, well, it looks like I have to do is the old-fashioned way. Use hand signals of runners. And uh, we're going to attack at 1230. Now, where were you going to attack? Rome. Okay. And uh, so we took off. And then I got to get ready. Uh, the first... The plan was for the for the infantry to go first, but the machine gun fire was so heavy that there's no way we get infantry in it. So I met the tanks went. Okay. So I went out. The third platoon went about 300 miles, 200 yards into the old clearing, and they got hit by a tank gun. Uh, Joe K. Wright was, took one projectile through his stomach. Oh. You know, that's a piece about that long and about, about that big around, maybe two or three pounds. Uh, he was a good guy, but I liked him very much. Anyway, uh, I said, well, we got to find where this fire is coming from before we move into the clearing. And we watch. And, uh, the, Gunner from Indiana, from uh, in Oklahoma, says they're firing out of those haystacks. Well, I, I knew everything there was either German or wasn't going to be friendly. Mm -hmm. So we opened up on the three, four haystacks. They all turned out to be four tanks that had been camouflaged. Oh. Them. And they were set on fire. And uh, they, uh, said, well, he talked to me, what kind of radios you have? So he said, if you don't have anything other compatible, so we'll do it the old-fashioned way. Uh -huh. we'll, by runners or hand signals. So I started, and the first thing you know, one of the runners come up to me. Because they were firing from the top of that silo. And I said, Milkarski, stop him. <laughs> he knocked, knocked that 
ten, ten of, the, of that silo of golf. Okay. And this, night, this instrument grin something nice. <laughs> <laughs> and he went, he come back and said, now they're firing from the middle of that silo. This is my car, he knocked the silo down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we did. Oh, and we started off, as I say, they started with the if you're supposed to go first, but the the uh, uh, machine gun fire was too really, So we went into it and we uh, This was in a military facility, so mm -hmm. they had a big security fence around it. Okay. There's a chain link fence, seven foot seven, with barbed wire on top. And you didn't have the injury to go over the top of that, you know. Oh, yeah. So, uh, we proceeded to take care of them like that. Yeah. The first thing, Andrew Orient. Andrew Orient was, his parents had a truck farm in Pittsburgh area. Uh-huh. He was a real nice guy. And Andy went out and had the German, some fire coming from the, from the side and it missed him. And I said, okay, look, we're, we're going to be watching. Just don't go quite as far this time. Because if they, did, if they had a good shot, we'd have hit you the first time. Yeah. So he did that. They fired again. And this special service guy stands up, puts the rifle to his shoulder, fires six times, and waves, come on. The white flag? <laughs> no, they, 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 oh. he knocked them out. Oh. They were, there were six. There were three guns there, three uh, anti tank guns. Okay. Anyway, we we kept going, and then we got to uh, the city. We I couldn't go in, so I stopped. Mm -hmm. And uh, the colonel says, "You're going to have a little rest rest now." Write your letters, read your mail, whatever you want. Because tomorrow morning you're, we're going to be in the front. <laughs> so I did it. Now the one thing that adds a little flavor to it, when we want to make the circle, we always go under big trees so mm -hmm. we didn't, you know, the Germans' planes couldn't see you. Okay. And, uh, when that first tank turned the corner, he kicked up some potatoes. So we had fried potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and we, all the things that they had. Uh, it was a nice day. It was, a, yeah. Well, yeah. At what time was that? What About what month was that? Was that in the summer or? This is May, June, ended, let's see, July, August. It was, uh, it was about August. Okay. Uh, that's because of the colonel says, you know, a, a company's on the on the point, with her, but tomorrow it's going to be used. So take it, relax, do right, lighter, do whatever you want. Uh huh. But be ready to go tomorrow. Wow. Well. Yeah. And then did you get to go in the next day? Uh, well, on Rome, they didn't want tanks in there. We went up to it and Colonel called me on the phone and said, get ready, we got a convoy going through Rome and the 756 is at 11 o'clock tonight. Okay. So they had organized, so we still had a big jam up. Okay. Oh. Organized. Okay. And, uh, so that's what we did. We used those potatoes good. 
<laughs> I'm adding the guys might save save a few more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, because there's something like that. You take one potato out of it and the army bought the whole wheel, you know. Oh. That's the way it was. That's okay. Fine. Well that's nice that they actually did that instead of yeah. you know, just taking yeah. it. Anyway. Um did you when the, they didn't want the tanks in Rome because I'm sure that would be hard on the it's not, to move it's around. A matter, it's a matter of uh, public relations. Okay. Yeah. So. So did you when you went to go in? Did you just r go in on like? Went, went through on well, the convoy that was organized. Oh, okay. And we, and, we came, and we had a assembly area north of Rome. Okay. Went there, and Colonel Howes was the first armored division who was commanding that task force. Thanked us for doing a good job. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn you over to Colonel Ellis. Colonel Ellis had two armored reconnaissance battalions. And uh, he started off by saying, well, I have some news from Normandy. They started Nor invading in Normandy. Okay. And our feeling was, well, so it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, we had a, had a relaxed area for, for that night. Uh -huh. And first thing in the morning, they were in the front. I had two tanks that had work to be done on them. So my mate is just waiting there and working on them. And they're looking at up to see tanks all buttoned up, coming up, top and middle. It was a 752. Now the 752 was our neighbors in, in Fort Lewis, and they didn't like anybody, nobody liked them. Huh. Uh, Colonel Russ uh, was a commander of 752 in Africa, and he's the one who was sucker to the, the mouse trap. They sent a small condo out and, and then back. And, and then the Russ, Russ saw it and he completed his whole force there. And when they got in there, they were waiting for him. Oh. There was one tank got out of it. Oh. So he was just finished for the war, really. But he was, he was nasty. Anyway, uh, when we got to, to Rome, I, I, I then supposed to take my tanks into Rome. And there, everywhere in, there must have been some old shallow mines that had broken down. There were a whole bunch of, just like a tank bar. Uh -huh. So we couldn't go that way. So it goes up and bursts on the with a 752 on, on the road, uh -huh. and that, that was their, their territory. I said, uh, that made me uh, very properly. And he asked me if I could go on the, just on the road and come back in. He said, no. And I thought that time, that says, road, doesn't think about the power pit. <laughs> so we took him around the power pit, up, <laughs> got up. Uh, but they had that assembly north of Rome, uh -huh. and uh, that's when Colonel Rogers said, well, you guys enjoy the night, write your letters, yeah. sleep, whatever you want to do, but tomorrow you're going to be in the front. Good. So that's what happened. Yeah. And, uh, and on the, we were about 60 miles north of Rome when they... Uh, had orders to withdraw. A British unit was taken to our place. Oh, withdraw, withdrew, I mean, uh -huh. and had some more little good potatoes. Uh, uh, and we went back, we were 60 miles north of Rome there. Mm -hmm. We went back to about 10 miles from Rome. Okay. And we knew we were. We were there ten days. Everybody got a chance for a day in Rome. 
Okay. When I died, I mean, I was in St. Peter's, and it was very dimly lit. Uh -huh. And I read the Pietra, you know the Pietra? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where I was there when one of the officials at St. Peter's said that St. Pius XIII wants to talk to you. Oh, so, so we went over past the Sistine Chapel. It was lit up. It was beautiful. Uh -huh. And went over. That settled down. Yeah. I happen to be about from here to in the corner of that house, uh -huh. uh, from uh, where the Pope was. Okay. And he, while they were organizing, he was talking to the, he asked for the American nurses up front, up here. So they were there, he was talking to them. He asked this one where he's from, he said Milwaukee. So he proceeded to tell all about Milwaukee. Oh. He had been a, a, a official in, from the Vatican to, to the United States. Uh-huh. And he had been there for two years. So oh, he, gosh. Now, which who was that again? Which pope was that? 13th. Pius the 13th. Pius the 13th. Okay. Mm-hmm. They all... He, he spoke to the people. The first he, called, he talked on to the Polish. Then he talked to the Italian, then he talked to the French, and then he got down to us and he talked to English. Wow. And he could speak well in all of those. Okay. Which is the Pope that they, that was, um, uh, what's his name? That, that they said that they don't, that he was sort of in cahoot. They try to paint him as if he was in cahoots with, uh, you know, allowing the the, Nazi, the Nazis to oh, take. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, somebody the 23rd or something, right? Um, At the uh, Pius the 12th? Well, there's the Pius, you said that was the 13th, but... Um, mm, John Paul II? Yeah. That area. Well, anyway. Okay. Yeah. So you got to, to be right there and see the Pope. Right there, yeah. And marveled at his language. Yeah. He talks naturally in every language. Wow. Yeah. The Europeans can do, a lot of them have better command of the different yeah. languages yeah. because they're around so many different countries. Right. Yeah. But uh, I like it very much. That's neat. Uh, anyway, we <laughs> we went up about a about a hundred miles north of Rome, and then they relieved us with the British. Uh huh. Yeah. I thought they're probably just going to be changing venue or something. Yeah. Well, they said we're going to stay here ten days. That's why they got the, the guys. All the guys got a day of Rome. That's nice yeah. to finally get a break mm -hmm. and kind of a vacation. Yeah, yeah. and uh, things were going pretty good. That's neat. Well, you know what? It is like a after two, and I should. I'm going to try to make some cookies, but okay. I have to get started on them. Okay. I can't get done unless I get started. That's right. Okay, I'll watch that. <laughs> are you going to do your, or are you going to take a nap? I'll be, I'll be the brow beater. <laughs> you can lick the batter. <laughs> so, do you want to go in the other room and rest for a while? Oh, I'll sit right here. Okay. Alrighty. Well, then should I, then I feel like I should sit. Go ahead and clean things up, whatever you want to do. Mm-hmm. You're done here? Yes. Okay. There's french fries left. Mm -hmm. um.